This is episode number 270 of the Middle Country Public Library podcast. Hello and welcome. Sal DiVincenzo here with my fabulous colleagues, Sarah Fade hey. and Nicole Rambo. Hello. And it is spring. Spring has sprung and the Nature Explorium has opened. It has. It has. Mm-hmm. So uh, today, Sarah and Nicole have a nature themed episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which they're very excited about. Mm. Uh, but first, for those of you who don't know what the Nature Explorium is, tell us so. Uh, it is the, uh, we were the first library in the nation to have this Nature Explorium, which is an outdoor learning space for children and families. And it was talked about one time at the White House. And it was talked about one time at the White House. <laughs> yeah, that, we, that we know of. That we it know could have been talked about many times. Multiple times, yes. Do we have video of that? It I was kind of like it, it was kind of like in passing, like they no. were walking through the hallway. <laughs> no, and like, did you like, hear that this they were doing place? a press conference about something. I, I don't remember, but it was doing a press conference about something from the White House. Yeah, and it was it was mentioned mentioned Middle yeah. Country Public Library's Explorium, Nature Explorium, yes, the Nature Explorium, yes. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah, we got you look. We're a I national model for m- multiple things. Yes. yes. I'd be very interested in that context. Yes. All right. Well, perhaps it's we can positive. find that and we'll put yeah. that on the, on the blog. Went, Woo. Yes. And that was it. <laughs> we and were watching. I remember I was, that nature wa- I was watching I'm... with Jess Cervello and Children's but Library. I just want, I'm curious as to know how it got brought up by the president. It wasn't the, the pre- president. It wasn't the president talking. It was oh. like one of the secretary, maybe the secretary of education. I there don't you know. Go. It was someone, oh. t- but they were co- they were on the White House. They were at White House adjacent. Yes, very White right. House. That's adjacent. not this. I was like middle, the president. No. I will say a Middle Country <laughs> Public Library has come up a number of times in in discussion at many places and been on the news. So we're a national model. So it's all good. Well, but you know, I honestly believe that. Like, I'm sure some libraries have had gardens, and they just did not call it. An explorium. That's true. That's like Pollock. You know what? I'm sure a lot of people threw paints on canvases before, but you know he did it first. He marketed it, and there, there you go. go. You know? Wow. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> you know, because I, I I took a art history class in <laughs> the college, and when Pollock came up, I said, "I'm like, I could do that." And my art history teacher was like, "Well, he did it first. And I was like, "Oh damn!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You're right." <laughs> That's right. Oh, <laughs> So you can go to the website, natureexplorium.org, and explorium is E-X-P-L-O-R-I-U-M.org. And then you'll see the schedule and just like a quick overview of what the what we have there. And it's, it really is great. And, and many times it has been uh, referred to as the water park. Oh, it's the place in the library with the water park. There is no water yes. park here. There's water. No. There is water. There's a water feature. It's called a water feature. Do not bring your kids with bathing suits no, no during need. the warm months. Shoes stay on. Yes. <laughs> clothes stay on. But it really, it really is neat. And and the the um the hours are posted on the website. So check it out. You can come down and it's open to the public. So yep. it's really nice. Uh, so that being said, we are going to talk about nature related things mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And Sarah, why don't you go first? Okay. So I've gotten a few alerts in in my uh, personal email mm-hmm. about hummingbirds. Nice. So we do know that they migrate, right? Um, what kind of alerts are you getting? Like they're about to attack? That's kind of weird. An alert. <laughs> Bunker down, <laughs> folks. Yeah. They do migrate mm-hmm. from Florida on up to us, and they should be arriving uh, any day now. <laughs> any day now, yeah, for real. Aww. April twentieth to like May first, they should be in our area. Cool. And so I have. Were they a- featured in the movie Birds? That we watched? No. Well, maybe. I, I don't, don't think so, though. I think they fixated a lot on the geese. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, hummingbirds are probably are hard to Yeah. <laughs> so I have some uh, some interesting facts about these little birds. Do you know how many species there are? Oh, there's probably a lot. I'm going to guess a lot. Oh, I thought it was just hummingbirds. Well, there's <laughs> different kinds of hummingbirds, so. Wow. 320 species. See? Oh, my goodness. See that? Mm-hmm. And uh, the greatest variety and number of species occur in South America. About 12 species are found regularly in the U.S. and Canada. So we only see like 12 of them. Only the ruby-throated hummingbird breeds in eastern North America. So that's the one we see the most. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all hummingbirds are small okay. and some yeah. are even minute. Wow. So the largest, giantest hummingbird of Western South America, ready, guys, is only eight inches. Oh, my goodness. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's the biggest one. And and the big one weighs um, 0.7 ounces. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, and then of course the it's tiniest like a bug at that point. No. Can you well, imagine? There's that? bumblebees that are bigger than that. No. The, well, they have pygmy hummingbirds, and that's like. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. a humming, if the hummingbird was like the size of like a stork? <laughs> and you had that outside your window. <laughs> the, imagine the, the beak on that thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tapping at your window. Yeah. The ruby-throated hummingbird has a wing beat rate of about seventy beats per second in the male, and the female has fifty beats per second. Wow. So in that one second, their little wings yeah. beat seventy times. Seventy times. Wow. The hummingbird's body feathers are sparse. Okay. okay, and they're often strongly metallic, but they look scale-like in appearance. That's mm, why they're yeah. like so pretty. Mm-hmm. So they Mo- like hover, right? They like yeah, and they go in reverse and up uh, and down. Yeah, yeah. Like, very, yeah, most birds don't like, like yeah. go up and down. Yeah. They're like helicopter, the helicopter yeah. yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most hummingbirds, especially the smaller species, have scratchy, twittering, or squeaky songs. So they're not songbirds, folks. Oh. But um, their U-shaped display flights, however, the wings often produce humming, hissing, or popping sounds. Mm. So it's their wings that they're we're hearing. Making... Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why they're yeah. named hummingbirds, because yeah. they're wings. They lay two eggs, usually <laughs> one day apart. And the eggs weigh ten percent of the female's body weight. Wow! And they incubate them for fifteen to twenty days. Hmm. That's yeah. it. That's that's all it takes for them. Um, hummingbirds are one of the few groups of birds that are known to go into torpor. You guys know what that is? I do this. They go into a very deep sleep <laughs> <laughs> because um, they have very high metabolism. Yeah, yeah. It, they say it's right before like hibernation. I was going to say, is it like a bear? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So their bodily functions are slowed to a minimum and mm. a very low body temperature is maintained because their feathers are very poorly insulated because mm-hmm. they're not like real feathers. And for the most part, they're not social. Huh. Yeah. Really? They don't flock together. Hmm. Yeah. They often compete. Like if you see them like zipping around each other, it's not because they're having a party. It's because they're like, get away from me. Sarah, are you a hummingbird? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You sleep really deeply. (laughs) 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 Well, the adjectives pugnacious and feisty are inappropriate. It's totally Sarah. There you go. Also, I I don't drink coffee, but you guys drink coffee, Mm -hmm. right? We do. So because um, they are fed by flower, wildflowers, you know, drink a cup of hummingbird-friendly coffee. Oh. Because a lot of the South American, you yeah, know, right. coffee and everything like that. So they say, this is um, a National Audubon page, by drinking certified bird-friendly coffee, um, also migratory birds, or uh, bird-friendly coffee, you help guarantee that coffee is grown on farms that feature the flowers that hummingbirds depend on. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't I'll wanna... make sure... That we get hummingbird friendly coffee. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm what? not doing that. No. I don't wanna be I don't wanna eat, drink, or drive anything that's friendly. That's an interesting what? stance. <laughs> that's like <laughs> That sounds sick. I like my Kona coffee and I'm drinking it. Yeah, but I know but there's plenty of like... Kona coffee that has probably certified bird friendly. Yeah. Real sure. you think so? Yeah. But All isn't right. Kona coffee from Hawaii? It is. Not South America. So are they hurting the birds? Is I don't all know. Birds? All well, mer- migratory birds. Oh, okay. so it's just probably yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so if you so because they are migrating up as we speak. Yeah. This <laughs> herd, <laughs> herd of uh, yeah. little tiny hummingbirds <laughs> are coming for you. Yeah. Um, they really need nectar-rich plants, right? And mm-hmm. of course, not everyone is going to plant something that's going to bloom right away. So if you don't have something, you can go and get a hummingbird feeder. Feeder, mm-hmm. I was going to say. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, and the thing is that it's nectar, so it's not like bird food, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really easy. I'm going to put this in, in the show notes in the blog. That it's a quarter cup white sugar mixed with boiling water. Okay. And that's like it. Easy. Yeah. And I think uh, the one that you buy at the store, though, they put food coloring in. So well, they are attracted it, right? to red. Yeah, red, yeah. 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 So, but like if you have a bird feeder, like buy a hummingbird yeah. feeder, you can buy, if you don't want to keep buying this at the store, yeah. it's like a little get a red one. Stop for yeah. them for on their, like, you know, when someone runs a marathon and they yeah. have those first aid stations. Yeah. Have a little hummingbird first aid. And then, so um, we have uh, bird guides in the adult department, mm-hmm. but the children's, uh, they have a lot of more specific little mm-hmm. books. Mm-hmm. So um, if you want to know a little bit more about hummingbirds or get some pictures, go to the children's side, call numbers 598-764. And one of the good things is there's a hummingbirds uh, book in facts and folklore from the Americas, and their stories. So I thought I'd read you guys a story real quick. 
Yeah. I think you can, right? Two minutes. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I okay. don't have anything to say, so. Okay. So <laughs> so this book is really cute, and it's all about hummingbirds, and it tells you different folk tales from different areas. So this is, I, I, I didn't choose this one for, for content. I chose it for brevity. So <laughs> this is a Taino story, why the hummingbird is attracted to the color red. Oh, oh good, good. Yeah, it's, it's all. So, and um, long ago in the hills, a magnificent waterfall fed a small pool. Alita, a beautiful young maiden, loved sitting in a special place where the waterfall flowed into the pool. One day while sitting by the pool, Alita met a boy, Taru. Taru was from another tribe, and his people were the enemies of Alita's people, the Tainos. But the two fell in love. For many months, they met secretly by the waterfall. One day, someone saw them and told Alita's father, who was the chief of the Taino people. The chief did not approve of the boy, and Alita was forbidden to see him again. Her father arranged for her to marry another boy, and Alita did not want to marry a boy she did not love. Grief-stricken, she begged the stars to turn her into a red flower. When Taru returned to the waterfall, he could not find Alita. The moon took pity on the boy and explained what had happened. Then the moon turned the boy into a tiny bird. Hmm. Since then, the tiny bird flies from flower to flower, turning often to the red ones. Though he will, in fact, mate with another hummingbird, some say that as he stops at each flower, he is trying to find his true love. Aww. That's not safe for work. <laughs> It's a children's book. It's a children's book. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have left that part out. Yeah. <laughs> the meaning part? <laughs> In fact, that he's a player. <laughs> he's still looking. Yeah. I mean, he's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> a bird's got a hummingbird. <laughs> he didn't get turned into a flower. Yeah. <laughs> Children, this yeah. is the story. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hummingbird. Yeah. But that, yeah, so that is why because his true love got turned into a red Alita, flower. I like that name. All right, yeah, yeah. And Taru. There's plenty of places that sell the nectar. Uh, I want to get it now. The, the feeders, actually, yeah. 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 The only thing is, is that is it the type of thing you just put outside in your house and then all of a sudden hummingbirds show up one day? Like, how do they know where to look? Probably like in the area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they see right. the red. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, exactly. Is. Like they just drive him by. They're like, oh, oh wait, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, that's the probably it. They're probably they, just, they don't stay at your house if you don't have it's what they like want. You, you're on a road trip and you're like, oh, they have a Whataburger here. Let's pull in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How does one attract a sal <laughs> to their area? A Whataburger. <laughs> Great. Okay, Sarah, that was very nice mm-hmm. of you to read to us. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, I don't and Nicole, have anything to read. Yeah, Nicole, what, what do you have here? So just going off of the Nature Explorium, we do have also Nature Backpacks, which I'm sure I've discussed before, but worth mentioning again. Um, they're right near the Nature Explorium entrance, and they have like different themes, but they're filled with books similar to like they have both i think they have both like picture books and then they have like guidebooks and stuff and then they have like different themes so like i know one's like butterfly catching so it's like a butterfly net and like things mm-hmm. like that That's so cute. um very cute you can take them out for the week i believe so you can go to different places um you know bring it with you and look for bugs and butterflies and all that kind of stuff so um we have those and then there was a book riot um article oh my god i know it's been gracious. a minute it's been a minute since i've talked why have i been here there's so. a book riot article for everything i know they came knocking at the door saying where's the gold <laughs> yeah i know right we haven't heard is there like mention. a book riot article of foot fungus or something <laughs> probably <laughs> we have her gift baskets <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but some of the books that i pulled that i thought were cute were um the thing about bees it's a picture book but it has like bee facts in it and it's very very cute. It's a like it's an easy book to read. And I like the pictures. It's very nice. Like and then at the back there's like a bunch of all the different kinds of bees. No, last year we did like a big bee thing in the Nature Explorium too. Nice. Yeah, I like bees. I know, right? They're cute. I don't. My one dog, um, Joffrey. We get some bees. Like yellow jackets. I they can. Yeah. Kill them all. I don't mm-hmm. care. Yeah. Little buggers. Yeah. But the fat little bumblebees, yeah. like, they're kind of like slow. They're yeah, like, very yeah. much Winnie the Pooh on, on wings. Yeah. And then Joffrey, he likes to like jump up and yeah, like, try the- to bite them. I'm like, no, <laughs> no leave them alone. <laughs> Mike does that too. Right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. It's so funny. He's like a little fat dog chasing yeah. a little fat bee. I'm like, oh my gosh. 
<laughs> actually, the author said um, in the back, it's uh, he says, I ha- wrote this book because I have a ridiculous fear of bees. When my sons were born, I didn't want to pass that fear out to them. So I set out to discover all I could about the little buzzers. I learned three things about bees. First, I learned that every living creature has a special part to play in the world, mm-hmm. and that includes you. Second, when I learned more about a scary thing, the thing feels less scary. And mm-hmm. third, I researched which bees and wasps are kind and which are kind to mean. I mean, mm-hmm. a guide to help you see the difference, too. It's brave to try to understand the things that scare us. Now go be brave. Aww. Very cute. That is cute. Yeah. So and then after, that's at the end of the book. And then that's when they have the little thing of he has kind to kind of mean um, line here. So the yellow jackets are the meanest. Oh, they're awful. Oh, yeah. And the bumblebee is the nicest. Yeah, little fannies. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a cute book. And then there's nonfiction ones, one called If I Were a Park Ranger. Hmm. And this is about you know, life as a park ranger and kind of like how parks got started. It's very much a children's book, though. This is good for like little kids. Right, that's cute. Yeah, it's very, very cute. So this little uh, part, there's two little kids and they have hearing aids in. Hmm. And it, it looks like the... Ranger is like signing kind of and I know that is true because when I was looking for jobs when I was you know primarily mm-hmm. a sign language interpreter there's always there national parks is always hiring for sign language interpreters oh, I'm sure. especially over like the summer seasons when it gets busy yeah. and I always thought that was so cool that like they have dedicated not mm-hmm. just like they don't just contract and hire people but they have like dedicated rangers who are also fluent in sign language interpreters that are there so I always thought that was really cool and that's really nice that they included that in the book exactly mm. and then there's another one from the smithsonian so obviously this one is a lot more like an encyclopedia and it's a dk book which yes. dk makes awesome yeah yeah you like unless DK you have books. tryptophobia which sarah has because there's a lot of little holes in these things but um <laughs> this is trees leaves flowers and seeds a visual encyclopedia of the plant kingdom yeah, so this one's a good one too. It's seeds. A lot of times it's seeds. It's always the That's seeds. It does it. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, there's one called National Parks of the USA, and this was written by Kate Cyber and illustrated by Chris Turnham. And I just really like the pictures. Mm. <laughs> I like the art in it. It's very. It's very nice. nice. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a stylized. Is that a uh, yeah. Well, folks, if you want to know, if yeah. I'm looking at a donkey. You're gonna have to take out the book. Yeah, but it's a very nice book. It's it's pretty to look at. But I would say this is for older. Your older, mm-hmm. like sixth, seventh grade, like older kids, or the other ones are for more for the younger ones. But nice. it's a very pretty book. It was nice. Cool. Um, yeah. So then it's more nature. Yeah, stuff for definitely you. get out there, folks. Yeah, mm-hmm. the weather's getting nice finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hot. Up. really nice. <laughs> Warming up and <laughs> and uh... it's like no spring. It went from like cold to hot. Yeah, yeah. it's and all right. Then... Okay. Today, my mom was watching my baby, and she was gonna take him out, and she's like, "No, it's too hot." I was like, "Oh god." Here, here we go. Here we go. Too hot. Too hot. Anyway, well, that's very nice. Thank you, Nicole. And uh, Sarah, you'll put these in the blog. Uh, Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, All of them. Oh, right. The blog. The blog. (laughs) That's right. Uh, Where is that blog? It's blog.mcplpodcast.com. Yeah. Yeah, go there, check it out. Uh, and if you're uh, listening on YouTube, why don't you hit that subscribe button? Mm. Yeah, we, we want to uh, be. We're, the... we're, we're over 1,000 now. We've yeah, you know, got a little good. bit of a, three, you know, a cushion there. we got like <laughs> 30 or 40 people extra. That's <laughs> why the that. other day the security guard, Bob, he had listened to the one with Amber about the seeds and stuff. Uh, and I think he's into gardening, right? Yeah, yeah. I think him I mean, and his one. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's... I guess I was in the bumper, right? I was yes, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, he's like, oh, Nicole, you were in that. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, every day or every week for four years, or I think four years. And I was Five like, oh, years. my God. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I couldn't, like, when I was telling someone else, yeah. I was like, wow, it's been a long it's time. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's why I want to evolve into something more visual. Mm. And that's coming down the road, I think. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, sure. <laughs> They're all shaking their heads. <laughs> see, if this was a video podcast, well, you know, everyone would see you rolling your eyes and yeah. shaking your head. That TikTok filter, the machine one, you hear about this? Yes. The yeah. TikTok filter? Because, okay, so normally on filters, you. Well, make us look like models? Yes. Yes. Even you, Sal. Oh, boy. Yes, yeah. it's called Bold Glamour. Oh, and it's, I'll do that then. It's not. <laughs> it's so good when it's on. You're like, I don't look like that, but you don't. No one looks like yeah. that. Yeah. But it's so good. You're like, I could, I don't. 
Because I thought I did. And you could put your you could put your hand in front of your face, right? Yeah, and it yeah, doesn't, it doesn't shift. Shift, yeah, yeah. That's like so yeah. body dysmorphia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. You're saying yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100. percent Yeah. But or or I'm so delusional that I'm like I don't look like that. It's like no, you don't. <laughs> but it's good to have, to act like you do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're right. yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll get that plug in for the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, the bold glamour filter. Yeah. Bold but that's glamour. how we really look, folks. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> You come down to the library, you walk right past us asking yeah. for us. No, like, yeah. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're on the podcast? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, no, that happened. Can I tell you that happened to me once? I, <laughs> so it was my first like interpreting gigs, back to interpreting, but um, it was so early in the morning. It was like a factory job and like it started at like five and I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. So I got there super early. I got there at, like 4.30. Mm-hmm. So obviously I didn't get any sleep. I didn't look like any type of way. I, looked, I literally <laughs> just rolled out of bed because I did. <laughs> so I was I met the person I was interpreting for very nice and then all of his coworkers and all it's all men you know the next day since I knew what to expect where I was going I put makeup on I did my <laughs> hair like I looked a little bit nicer I showed up and the one co- coworker goes are you the same one from yesterday? <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, you look different. I was like, oh my God. I was very embarrassed. <laughs> and like, you could see this, the sheer like shock on his face at how like horrible I looked the day before. <laughs> I was like, wow. All right. So anyway, it does happen. <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's coming, folks. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you want to listen to older episodes or read our show notes, visit our website, mcplpodcast.com. So for Sarah Fade and Nicole Rambo, I'm Sal DiVincenzo. We'll see you on the next show. <laughs>